Hello, it's me, your fellow student nurse, back in action. Here I will demonstrate the previously spoken case study. The case study has a mother and father speaking but for the purposes of this video it is the father only, because I didn't want to have to pay for another 3D model. Come on in. Nurse, I have a question regarding one of my son Jim's medication. I have some concerns that I would like to have addressed. I understand that you may have questions and concerns and I am more than happy to help. What are your concerns? Well, Jim is starting to take this drug called Thorazine and the physician talked about some side effects he may experience. I googled about the drug and saw something called extrapyramidal symptoms and it looked pretty scary. Can you explain to me what they are because I really couldn't understand all that science gibberish talk he was going on about? Extrapyramidal symptoms, or EPS for short, are possible adverse reactions that can occur as a result of the medication. These are movement disorders and can manifest in four different ways. The earliest of these possible movement disorders is known as acute dystonia. Acute dystonia can manifest as spasm of muscles in the tongue, face, neck and back. It can also cause what we call oculogeric crisis, which is the involuntary upward deviations of the eyes. It can also cause what we call opisthotonus, which is the tetanic spasm of the back muscles causing the truck to arch forward while the head and lower limbs are thrust backward. That picture looks scary. Would you prefer a kitten picture? Yes please. Thank you. So how long can acute dystonia last? Acute dystonia can occur a few hours to five days after the beginning of medication therapy. Another EPS is known as Parkinsonism and can occur five to thirty days after the onset of therapy. These symptoms include bradykinesia, which is slow movement. Also tremors, rigidity, shuffling gait, drooling, cogwheeling, and stopped posture. Acothesia is also another form of EPS that can take place and usually develops within the first two months of treatment. It manifests as compulsive, restless movement such as pacing, and symptoms of agitation and anxiety. Parkin, huh? A K what? Parkinsonism and acalthesia. Sounds like vocabulary words to me. They sure do. People, better take note. Wow, those all do sound pretty darn tooting scary. Well there is one more that I haven't gone over yet, and it is by far the most troubling EPS, tardive dyskinesia. Tardive dyskinesia is the involuntary twisting, writhing, worm-like movements of the tongue and face. Yeah. I just did that. Just did what? Nothing. So I read somewhere that these symptoms only get worse. How can they get worse than the ones you talked about? Also, with all the research going on, what can be done to help this? The symptoms only get worse if not addressed and treated properly. EPS can be misconstrued as psychotic behavior and never treated, therefore, can potentially get worse. Okay. So let's say I see my son Jim showing signs of that acute dystonia stuff. What can be done? Well, remember. Acute dystonia occurs early in therapy and typically goes away after five days or sooner. However, if intense dystonia occurs, an IM or IV of anticholinergic drugs such as benztropin or diphenhydramine, also known as Benadryl, can be administered. Well, I'm glad something can be done. What about that Parkinsonism? Parkinsonism can be treated with the same type of meds but can also be treated with amantadine or even both. However, if the symptoms are severe, a switch to a second-generation antipsychotic such as clozapine or resperdal can be an option if the physician or psychiatrist deems it necessary. Oh, okay. What about AK-47? I mean, acothesia? Acothesia can be treated either by reducing the dosage or switching to a low-potency antipsychotic, such as seroquil or zeprexa. Also, benzodiazepine, beta blockers and anticholinergic drugs can be used. What about the really scary one, tardive dyskinesia? Now remember, tardive dyskinesia is a late reaction and doesn't occur until months or even years into therapy. For TD however, there is no reliable treatment. 
the withdrawal of any anticholinergic meds and the administration of benzodiazepines, although may not be finite, can be tried as a measure to reduce TD symptoms. Also reducing the thorazine dosages or even switching to a second-generation antipsychotic can be a possible measure to consider. Despite all of that, studies have shown the best way to handle TD is prevention, as there is no reliable treatment. By using antipsychotics at the lowest dose possible for the shortest period of time, the risk for the manifestation of tardive dyskinesia is greatly decreased. This is why the need for continued therapy is always annually assessed, and neurological evaluations are done every three months. Wow, that was a lot of information. I bet if I were to have a pharmacology exam next week, I would do pretty well with this knowledge. One can only hope. What are you looking at? Nothing. Are you on any psychotropic meds? Do you have any other questions regarding your son's treatment? Oh, well, I understand that Jim might need to take the medication for the rest of his life. How am I ever going to get him to take these pills if the side effects are so bad? Well, poor medication adherence is the number one reason for hospital readmission among those with schizophrenia. This could be because of both the side effects and, typically, the lengthy treatment. It is important to remind your son and yourself that taking these antipsychotics on a regular schedule maximizes its effectiveness. Talk to your son about these side effects so that he, too, is aware of them and either have you, the physician or psychiatrist, or both discuss with him the possible measures that can be taken in regards to these side effects just as I have spoken to you about them. Tell him to keep track of these side effects not only EPS but also the other ones such as dry mouth and constipation. Remind him to share these side effects with the physician or psychiatrist so that an effective plan of action can take place whether it be a dose change, med change, or the addition of EPS counter medications. Side effects can be difficult, but for most clients, these medications may be necessary to even properly function normally in society. If he gets to the point of being too overwhelmed and just want to stop taking meds, period. Sit down with him and make a pros and cons list of the possible issues that can arise with the medication and without. Watch him and make sure he doesn't cheek his meds. You may feel like the bad guy or the devil's advocate, and he may make you feel guilty, but remember, you are doing this for him. I just hope it doesn't get to that. Thank you so much for your input and advice. You're welcome. And that concludes this pharmacology presentation. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and found the information to be helpful. Who are you talking to? What are the voices saying? Right now we will be passing out handouts of these extra pyramidal symptom. We hope you find these helpful. I'm going to get another nurse in here. You are really starting to freak me out. Here come the happy pills.